to do that for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Church of Christ, you have that at every Sunday at Church of Christ for, for him, he says. So I don't believe that, but no, thanks, Jimmy Ray. Uh, it is my pleasure today to introduce the newest cowgirl here with us at OSU, and that's our new women's uh, head coach, women's basketball coach, J.C. Hoyt. Uh, and she, I think in March of this year, J.C., right? Um, she came here at OSU after serving as a head coach at Kansas City. Now, most of you know that as UMKC, but it's my understanding of looking at a couple of years ago, they changed that name yes. to Kansas City. So it's the Kansas City Roos, right? Mm -hmm. Short for the Kangaroos, right? Okay, I think I get all that right. So anyway, Kansas City, here we go. Her roots in Big 12 country certainly uh, run deep. Her mother, Shelly, is a, a Kansas high school coaching legend, quite frankly. Uh, JC, who played for her in high school, was she tough on you, JC? Was she oh, a little bit? Okay. Darren? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and she, and she played, uh, JC played collegiately at Wichita State. Um, she, um, and she was actually, I think, the starting point guard at Wichita State for her last two years there. But uh, before uh, taking the Kansas City job, she also had a career stops at Fort Hayes State, Nevada, and Kansas State. Her work at Kansas City was really transform transforming. Uh, she led the Ruse to 2020 Western uh, <coughs> Conference regular season championship the first time in program history, and more than 20 wins in two, two of her final three years there. Uh, twice during her tenure, Kansas City finished among the top 50 nationally in scoring offense. I don't know how many of you went to the uh, game on Tuesday night. Hands up. Okay, we expect a lot more of that in the future here, okay? A lot more hands up, okay? Because these kids play hard. Their, their tenacity is unbelievable. Uh, you, you can tell they follow their coaches uh, upbringing and what she brings to the to the to the court every day. Uh, <clears throat> as a student athlete at Wichita State, like I said, she was a starting point guard there for two years, and she's also a standout in the classroom. Uh, during her high school years, she enjoyed one of the most prolific scoring careers in Kansas prep history. She averaged 27 points a game over her career, so she knows how to fill that bucket up pretty good. She's a three-time All-Stater in basketball and volleyball, plus an All-Stater in track. So she's, uh, you know, a, uh, a pretty strong athlete, I would say, right there in herself. You can still kind of hoop a little bit, can't you? Try. You try? Okay. <laughs> uh, she comes from a family of educators and a coaching pedigree. Mom, as we mentioned, um, at one point led Hoxie High School to a state record 170 straight wins and three, four consecutive state championships. Uh, her mother is currently the head coach at Eureka High School. Her father's the superintendent there. I don't know who's the boss at that school, but... Uh, probably a mom, but uh, um, uh, she has two sisters that are teachers, uh, Tabitha and Karina, and the third sister, Taryn, which we introduced earlier, is a, uh, is a graduate assistant on JC staff. Uh, she's married to Daniel over here, and he actually got to ride with her in the car, he said today, so I guess he must be important. Anyway, hey, and I'm just telling you guys to talk about going to the game. It's unbelievable what she's got these girls doing. Uh, it's 100 bucks for a season ticket, 100 bucks. You can get a season ticket for 18 games. That's five dollars a, a ticket, people. I mean, seriously, if you went to half the games, that's a deal. So think seriously about getting your ticket and getting it now. So anyway, I want to introduce our new head coach, JC Hoyt. Thank you so much. I feel like I need to walk on the orange carpet. So let me come right here. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you so much for having me today. Um, we have an off day of practice and um, to get to be here with you guys is just a treat. And um, oh my gosh, that food was so good as well. So um, yeah, I just, I, I kind of feel like Scott said everything I was going to share with you guys. So now I have to make stuff up. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, I, um, Listen, this has just been uh, such a blessing in my short amount of time here. And I think you can probably tell from my upbringing that, you know, basketball and um, just influencing other people and having an ability to impact lives through education and through sports um, is really all I've ever known uh, through my parents. And to get to do that can still at such a high level with family is um, just so special to me. And uh, Daniel and I uh, just wake up feeling so blessed every day to get to be a part of this amazing community, uh, to get to do it together, to have my sister by my side. 
And really what I want you guys to know is just that we consider you family as well. And even if I haven't met you, uh, I have never in my whole life felt so supported and embraced as this community has made me feel. And so I just genuinely want to thank you. Uh, even if I haven't got to talk to you, you guys uh, through word of mouth or um, just in all your different ways, I feel like really wrapped your arms around myself and our family. So thank you for that. Um, so I'll, I'll share just a little bit about our team. And um, it was so important for me to come here today because you guys, like Scott said, still have an opportunity to come to all of our games, okay? So our first game is officially on November 7th. Is that Monday? Monday, yeah, it's sneaking up on me here. Um, so a little bit about what you can expect when you come to watch our team, okay? And I'll just kind of educate you, thank you. Um, is that going to go off? Okay, I'll tell you when I need it. Um, so <laughs> I forgot my box score, so she's got it for me. Um, so when I got here, okay, we really had a lot of roster turnover. So uh, the team had a rough season last year, and uh, we currently have four players that were on last year's team. And I want to start by talking about those four players. So uh, a group of girls, um, two are from California, which is kind of ironic, um, but I think that really speaks to the community of Stillwater, and then two from Oklahoma, um, all who just loved Oklahoma State and wanted to stay here and be a part of what we're trying to build. And uh, their names are uh, Lexi Keys, who's an Oklahoma girl. If you were at the game, you, you saw Lexi shooting all those threes. Uh, Cassidy DeLapp, who uh, did not miss a, a single shot um, on, on Tuesday night. She made every free throw. Uh, she was perfect from the field. She's a fifth year uh, post player from California. Uh, the other one from California is Macy James. And uh, then, I'm sorry, I skipped the other Oklahoma um, player who you probably have heard of because her dad was a superstar here. Taylon Collins. And uh, we have really high expectations for all four of those players this year. And I'm so happy that they stayed because they have been a really uh, just integral part in what we're building. The rest of our roster is all new faces. Uh, so I'm sure some of you have heard of the transfer portal. Raise your hand if you guys have heard of the transfer portal. Yeah, so I'm hearing like, Ugh. so I'll tell you that the transfer portal is not all bad. Um, it can definitely take away but man it can also give and we were able to go into the portal this spring and just totally flip a roster that had lost almost all of its scoring and we brought in a whole bunch of scores and if you were at the game Tuesday night you saw us like Scott said um, really fill it up and um, just kind of giving you guys some insight into my coaching world, it's, it's really kind of um, a little bit of a predicament for me to decide who I'm going to play and who I'm going to start because we have so many players who have started every game where they transferred from. So I had a meeting on, uh, the, on Monday before our game and I had to meet with seven players and I said, I went around the table and I said, okay, have you ever not started? Have you ever not started? Have you all seven players had started every game where they were coming from? And so we had to, you know, talk and, and um, meet about, okay, you know, we got to really set ourselves aside and do what's best for the team. And some of you have to be okay with coming off the bench um, because they're so used to just, you know, being um, great impact players where they came from. Great problem for us to have, right? We've got players who average double figures where they came from and really who are great leaders. And so I just share that with you because I want you to know kind of um, when we went into the transfer portal, we were able to get really high level scores. We were able to get players who came from other programs that were winners. We really wanted to go after players who have won at a high level, who understand what it takes to win at a high level. And we were able to get that. And I'm just so excited now for it all to come together um, because they all came here because they wanted to do something really special, right? And each of our players, I just want you to know, they picked Oklahoma State because they want to put us on the map. And how many sweet 16s have we been to before? Three, okay? So our goal here for all the players who came and, and for my coaching staff is that that is no longer a trivia question. That's just the golden standard. 
That's just what we do every single year. That's the expectation that I'm going to have for our program. That's the expectation that our players who choose to come here have. Um, and then, of course, we want to go further than that, right? We want the trivia to be, well, how many Final Fours, you know, um, how many Elite Eights? That's where we really want to take this thing to. And the players that we have right now, oh, my gosh, they are here for it. And they are really great players who had opportunities to go elsewhere to programs that were maybe more established, um, who the standard is a Sweet 16 or an NCAA tournament every year. But they said, no, coach, we want to be builders. We want to change it. We want to be the ones who change, um, you know, the, the trajectory of everything and really start this thing off right for the future. So I'm just incredibly privileged to get to coach this group of women who chose us, you know, who chose Oklahoma State and came here to do something special. So let me uh, just share a little bit of stats um, from our last game. And uh, just to kind of give you guys uh, some, some perspective on when you come to our games, because I know all of you are gonna come after this, right? Right, yes, 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 okay. So when you come, um, here's the style that we're trying to play. Not trying, we are going to play, all right? First and foremost, we wanna play fast. We want to play super, super fast, and I'm okay as a coach with taking shots really early in the shot clock. I'm okay with them letting it fly from the three-point line. Um, I want our kids to be super aggressive and confident um, that they can uh, shoot it and score it quick. So um, I am really proud to tell you that the other night you would have seen this style uh, because we scored 91 points. And we really should have scored a hundred, but in the fourth quarter, I told my players, let's slow it down and just, you know, kind of reverse the ball and work on our offense, um, just out of respect for the game and, and for the opposing team. Um, uh, but that is what you can expect when you come is a fast up tempo game where a lot of shots are being taken. A lot of three point shots are being taken. So we shot 10 for 21 from the three-point line. So almost 50% from the three-point line. Um, from the free throw line, we were 21 of 24, which is really, really impressive. Uh, so overall for the game, guys, we made, uh, we took 60 shots and we made half of them. So that's just kind of, you know, I'm gonna go back to what we targeted in the transfer portal of players who really can score the ball. And we, we got to play defense, right? Um, so also you can expect to just see a group of hard nosed, tough defenders. We call ourselves pests. You know, I asked, so, so what do you want other teams to feel when they play against, against you? And they said, well, we want to be pests. We want to be, you know, just up in their shorts and make them feel like they can't do anything. And so that really allows us um, to play that pace that we want to offensively with just that kind of in your face, um, defensive style. So we, we want to run and gun. We want to play fast. We want to make it miserable for the opposing team. And that's where you guys can really help us. Um, because your presence that you can bring is a part of making it miserable for the other team. So I want to talk to you just a little bit about another stat that if you got online and and looked at, you wouldn't be able to find it. This is a stat that we take in-house. And what I'm about to share with you, I'm not just making this up. This is actually, uh, there's two boards that I put on my whiteboard before my pregame talk every game. And I tell our players, I don't even want you paying attention to the scoreboard. We have to win these two categories. And I'm confident that if we win in these two categories, we're gonna like the outcome of the game, okay? So the first one is rebound, okay? Um, my mom is longtime coach, like, like Scott said, um, and she idolized Pat Summit. And Pat Summit is notorious for saying that offense sells tickets, defense wins games, rebounds win championships. So we're here to win championships, okay? So um, that first board that we, we wanna win on the scoreboard is the rebounding category, okay? So for every timeout, um, if you guys are ever wondering, what, what are they saying in that timeout? I'm probably looking at that scoreboard. Are we up on the boards or not? And if we're not, probably not going the, the way that we want it to go, right? So that's the first board. The second board is what we call our hype board, okay? And hype for us is just any 
positive interaction that we can bring to the game. Uh, I'm a big believer in just finding joy in what you do and uh, who you get to do it with. And so for us, that's really reflected in our hype, okay? So hype is that positive interaction. It could be uh, vocally. So can I get like a little woo? Like, give me, give me some, some vocals here. Like something good. Yep. Yep. Okay. So if you just said that you would get a high point for yourself and also for the team. Okay. Another way that we can get hype points is if we give uh, just a good old fashioned high five. So let's get some high fives around here. Yeah. Perfect. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, so, so we really like touch, like we love connection and studies show that the more um, touch and, and connected a team is, um, the more, you know, love and, and synergy and all those great positive things. So we want to get touches in any way possible. So I'm going to make you guys stand up, stand up, stand up. Okay. So you could get a high point by any point of touch. So I'm going to give you guys freedom. You can give fives, you can give chest bumps you can give a, a good old butt slap okay i'm looking for butt slaps chest bumps high fives are you ready get earn all the high points okay ready one two three go bring it bring it oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. That's good. That we are winning on the scoreboard right now. So we do, we'll, we'll track all of those. Okay. And, and we actually have, um, we have a coach who isn't even paying attention to any statistical category in basketball or paying attention to our plays or anything. They're just specifically watching for that hype. Um, so they, they track every point, right? Uh, a couple just little inside scoops that I'll give you. Who, who told me this is on YouTube? I hope no one from our opposing team ever watches this or, or officials, because I would probably get in trouble for this. But we tell our team, okay, so for example, if we make the other team call the first time out, okay, because we're going on a run, and we go uh, meet our team, at, we say we want to meet our team at the half court line, because we're so pumped that we force the other team to call a timeout, that would be extra hype points for us. Another way that you can get extra hype points is if we get a bench warning from the officials, because our bench is celebrating so hard that they are being a distraction to the actual game, we get extra hype points. So that is actually 10 extra hype points for us. Um, and it's, it's so funny because, you know, the, the official, they'll give us the warning and I have to act to my team like, Hey, you guys, you know, knock it off, sit, sit down. And then the ref will walk away and I'll be like, yeah, good job. Way to get him. Um, but no, we just, we, we seriously, we want to play with so much joy and so much positive energy. And the way that we, um, celebrate after the games is, uh, we, if we win on the hype board, cause you know, keep in mind, we're tracking the other team's points as well. And we always want to have more points. We want to have more touches, more hype, more positive energy than the other teams. So what we'll do is we will announce the overall, uh, hype team winners. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, I'm going to put put you guys through a little test run and I'm going to give you a series of things that you might uh, celebrate if you were to come to our game. And Taryn is going to stand up here with me and she is going to track who we think is bringing the most hype. So we're going to announce our hype team just like we do in games. So here's what we do. I'm going to put you guys through your test run. And then we're going to announce our all hype team. And how we announce that is everybody has to give a drum roll. So give your little drum roll on the table. Yep. We'll announce the player. And then you guys get to come up here and stand with us. Okay. Now the overall hype winner gets to put this hype chain on. Okay. So we actually brought the hype chain for you today. Okay. So let's pretend I'm going to give you about three different scenarios here. And you guys probably should stand up if you really are serious about it. We're going to be evaluating you. Okay. We are evaluating. Okay. All right. So 
The first scenario is that we just went on a 10 point run and the other team calls a timeout. Go. <laughs> okay. I like this. I like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. The next scenario is that our post player, Cassidy DeLab, just took a charge. Go. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. All right, and the last scenario is that Lexi Keys from Oklahoma just knocked down the game-winning three to win Bedlam, go! <laughs> that's perfect, perfect. Good job, good job, that's great. Okay, y'all can have a seat. We're gonna deliberate here. Okay. All right. Can we get a drum roll? Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, Larry. Come on, Larry. Come on, Larry. Come on, Larry. Come on, Larry. Come stand with me, Larry. to do a dance move. Oh. Yeah, we'll go, we're going five here. Okay, our second member of high team goes to Tom. Yeah, Tom! Show us your dance move, Tom. Hey, way. <laughs> Say what? Um, yes. No, you got to stay up here. You got to stay up here. All right. You got the next one, Taryn? Drum roll. Our third member of the high team. One, two, three. Yay! Come on. Good job. Did you give your dance move? Hit it. <laughs> I, uh, the lady is back there. Yeah. All right, drum roll. Member number four. Yeah! Come on! Come on! <laughs> All right, we got one more and then we have our MVP. Ready? Okay, fifth member, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. We've got Butch! Yeah! <laughs> Go give your dance move. Hit your dance move. Yeah. All right, and drum roll for our MVP. <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, oh, okay. I, 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 got, I got to do this. I had these two tickets for a special junior floor sweep right down like the Nicholson sweeps on the floor. And our hype queen of the club. My God, it's this lady out here. Yes. <laughs> yes, sister. <laughs> All right. Good job, guys. You can sit down. Way to bring the hype. Way to bring the hype. You guys were awesome. <laughs> All right. 
so as you can see, that is the type of atmosphere that we want to bring. And our, I promise you, our players are going to bring it because that's what we're demanding of them. Um, and now we just need you guys to bring it. And I hope you had so much fun today. And I just want you to know, if you come to our games, you're going to have that same sense of fun and excitement and energy. And we have the best players. I mean, I could stand up here and tell you story after story of how truly amazing our players are. They work so hard. They're so bought into representing Oklahoma State to the best of their abilities. And they just love each other. And you're going to see them fight for one another. You're going to see them compete and be fiery and feisty and all those things that, um, you know, we want for cowgirl basketball. So I hope you guys will come and I hope that you bring the hype. And um, this was just so much fun. So thank you for letting me spend my afternoon with you. Yes, I'll take questions. Do we have any questions? Sure. Yeah. Yep. So coaching staff, um, I got a big staff and um, it's really amazing to have all the resources that we get to have here. So um, the way that we uh, organized or structured our staff is I kept uh, someone who I felt like was really going to help me just understand the landscape of Oklahoma state and someone who truly, truly bleeds orange. And you might know him. His name is Jack Easley. So Jack. Yep. <laughs> um, another coach that was also currently here when I got here, she was only here for one year, but she, um, it, it was very evident to me when I got hired that she had quite the impact on our current team and, um, across the, the recruiting landscape of the country and Jimmy's and Joe's beat X's and O's. Okay. That's something that we live by. You got to recruit, you got to, you got to find the, the right players. And that is Taylor Carr. So Taylor and Jack were both previously here. And then I was really strategic on that third assistant that I wanted to keep um, or, or go recruit, I should say. And I am so proud to brag to you about this coach because uh, when this was all kind of going on when I got hired, um, she was on the market and the people who were coming after her were number one, Texas. Okay. And yeah. And, uh, number two, LSU and LSU recently just got Kim Mulkey, uh, who put Baylor on the map and is currently doing that at LSU. Those were the two schools that I really had to fend off and say, okay, I went to administration. We got to have this coach. She's special. She's special on the floor. She's special on the recruiting trail. Her name is Jasmine player. So those are my three assistants. Um, and then, uh, I, I don't know, does anyone in here know Talby justice? He's a, yeah, Talby is an Oklahoma boy. Um, he, man, he really bleeds orange and he's helping us, uh, with our recruiting. And then I also brought another coach named Robin Bostic with me from Kansas city. And she is just really my right hand. Um, she's been with me from the start of my head coaching career, someone who is very near and dear to me and understands, uh, really just, you know, how to put my, uh, personal mark on the program. And, uh, she's, she's got a great basketball mind. And then of course, Taryn, my, my sister here is our director of operations. And, uh, we really obviously share, share the same blood, share the same heartbeat. So she's really helping me put my mark on the program as well. What other questions? The status on our player praise is her name from Germany. So, uh, yeah, I can't even say her last name either. I don't want to do her that disservice. So we'll just call her praise. Um, and she is uh, such a blessing. I'm so excited for her to get here. Um, and the status is that, um, she had some visa issues and kind of what happened guys is, is when COVID hit, um, from an international standpoint, there are just a lot of things that uh, kind of got muddied up. And unfortunately, she just kind of fell victim to one of those unfortunate circumstances. So she is going to be a cowgirl, but we could not get here, get her here in the United States until semester. So you can expect to see praise at semester. And she can't wait. She's so excited to get here and we can't wait to have her. What other questions? Two schools. How did I get Jasmine from those two schools? Great question. So, um, correct. Yes. And I think that that's what makes Jasmine so special is that for her, she really values people first. And, uh, she, I think her and I really hit it off really well. And we shared 
a vision for what we know this place can be, uh, where we want to take it. Jasmine played for Coach Mulkey at Baylor. <laughs> so so she and, and when Jasmine played, um, it was in the Andrea Riley days. OK, so her respect level for Oklahoma State women's basketball really is very, very high. Um, it already was before she got here. Um, and she just, she knew what it could be. She wanted to stay closer to family, um, that is in Texas. She knew she didn't want to be at Texas. She wanted to be here, uh, with me and, uh, just get this thing back on the right track and no different than our players, you know, who had choices of, well, do I want to go to this school or do I want to build something special and be the first person to do it? That's what Jasmine ultimately, um, decided Oklahoma state on. Yeah. So, so how about the, uh, how about the big 12? Tell us about the big 12 top to bottom. The big 12 top to bottom is as competitive as it has been in a really long time. Um, if you look at all the teams that made it to the NCAA tournament last year, um, the top six teams, I believe, uh, were in the NCAA tournament and it's no different this year. So, uh, currently we have, uh, Texas is number three in the country. Is Iowa State in the top 10? Iowa State is in the top 10. And ironically, Iowa State got picked over Texas in the Big 12. Um, but in the, in the AP coaches poll, they're both in the top 10. Uh, you've got Oklahoma and uh, Kansas. Kansas State is receiving votes. But we have you know five or six teams that are already in the top 25. Uh, very similar to football. You know, and I, I say that because we're in football season, but um, there's no give me games. You have to show up. You have to be at your best every single night. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to it. I think we're going to have some fun. And I, I think we're going to surprise some people. How tall is our team this year? So that's kind of a tricky question because we have quite a variety. So I, there are times when our lineup is really, really big. And I feel like we've got long, tall guards. Our tallest player is Cassidy, and she's at 6'3". Okay. Um, but then we also have really, you know, small kind of feisty guards that can really play fast and help us with that style that we want to play. So sometimes you might see a bigger lineup. Sometimes you might see a smaller lineup. And you can expect to see us kind of change the style that we're playing, depending on what those lineups look like. I think the way you do your own personal score is interesting. So in measuring success, that's compared to the other team's value. So someone is actively watching, obviously their rebounds, but also yes. their hype. Yes. That's yes. Cool. Okay. Yes. That's exactly how we do it. Just and, um, you know, we really, although we're measuring it against the other team, we've been talking so much about just us versus us and just being the best that we can be and not really getting caught up or focused on other people or other people's thoughts or opinions. Um, and so it's really kind of just also a way for us to measure, are we being at our best right now? Yeah. Obviously you're keeping easily away from, uh, the free throws, uh, <laughs> because of last year and, uh, <laughs> what, what are y'all doing different? I know you have better shooters mm -hmm. obviously, but you also had a girl go six for six or eight for eight from the line the other night that was about a two for eight last mm -hmm. year. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, so yes, I think the first thing is we changed the culture just in terms of the shooters that we brought in. And the second thing that we worked really hard on this spring, this summer, and this preseason was just reprogramming their brains. And we spent a lot of time just infusing confidence into our players and getting rid of you know, we, we, we have a, a rule. We don't say stupid stuff out loud. Okay. So if you're talking about missing free throws or whatever, we don't talk about that stuff. We only put positive things out there. And, um, we spend a lot of time in practice, putting them in pressure, free throw situations. Uh, for example, we have a drill where they have to make 10 free throws in a row in two minutes. And if they don't make them in a row, then they have to run. So every single day, <laughs> Listen, we were at the beginning, we were at the beginning, um, but it's, it's so much a mindset and it's just, you know, what, what you think of yourself is ultimately what you're going to, how you're going to act and behave. And so we've really worked on just, um, you know, who we are, who we want to be and, and how we go about things. So one more question, 
Welcome to Stillwater, first of all. Thank you. I'm going to take you away from basketball for a second. Okay. A move from Kansas City to Stillwater had to be quite a culture shock. <laughs> what was your one big surprise when you got here? Okay, well, keep in mind, I'm from a really small town. Okay, so I would say that the biggest shock has not really even been for me as much as my husband, Daniel. And um, I'll, t I'll tell just a, a funny story of just, and you guys understand this being from a small town, but we were on our way to something kind of running late because we kind of do that sometimes. And, and this car was driving slow and, you know, kind of pulled out in front of us and then was driving slow and Daniel's honking his horn. And I said, Daniel, I said, you cannot, you cannot do that. You cannot honk at people. And he's like, why? He pulled out in front of me. He's going slow. I said, I'll tell you why. Cause they're probably going to the same place we're going and we're going to have to see them. So, um, you just don't do that in small towns, right? Cause you're going to see them either where you're going or the next day. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but no, we love it here. It's been really fun for us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Thank you so much.